I would like to talk to you today about the joy of being narrow-minded. Um, please understand where I'm going with this. Uh, the political correct system out there likes to say that white men and whatever else are uh, white Christian men or white men, conservative men, that we're narrow-minded, that we're bigoted, that we're racist, that we're homophobic, that we're uh, all the little terms that they come up with. Sometimes you have to answer the fool according to their folly. Sometimes you say, you don't even know me, you're prejudging me and whatever else, but hey, if you want to call me narrow-minded, let me explain to you why I find joy in being what you would call narrow-minded. You see, there are bad narrow-minded people. People that are very closed-minded, they're doing things the wrong way and they can't be told any different. That is bad, that's being bad in terms of being narrow-minded. But uh, there are people like myself, men like myself, who have things figured out in life. And I am no longer just open to any possibility. I now have favorite foods. I don't just have to try everything out there. Eh, no thanks, I've tried that in the past, it made me sick, I don't really like that. Oh, you're narrow-minded. In this issue, yes. Um, those types of clothing, yeah, I don't wear that anymore. That polyester, it's not really that good. I, don't, I like natural fibers, cotton and wool and you know, linen, things like that. Um, hey, why don't you live in the South for a while? Uh, well, I've been in the South and, and um, down there, and I've been in the jungle of Costa Rica and Honduras and things, and uh, I don't really prefer that. I like the North. That's my ancestral land, uh, heritage type land, and so that's where I want to be. Oh, you're very narrow minded. Yes, I am, actually. Thank you. Uh, I am very narrow minded. Um, my beliefs as a Christian, you say you're very narrow minded. Well, yes, because I found the truth. And I find great joy in that, being that narrow-minded. Now, here's the thing. Even though I'm very much set in my ways, as they would say, I'm still open to other people out there. I'm still open to people of other races or religions or whatever else. I'm not going to just go out and kill everybody that doesn't act and believe exactly like me. Certainly. And I can get into a heated debate with somebody and still walk away without killing them. <laughs> Obviously. So... But you see, society, modern society, in an effort to browbeat you into submission, they want you to believe that being narrow-minded is a bad thing. Being narrow-minded, in the true sense, is not a bad thing. It just means that you have things figured out. I know what works for me. What you do with your life is none of my business. But if you don't like the way I live and you want to call me narrow-minded because I don't live like you live, then okay, I'm narrow-minded and I have great joy in that. Give you a couple of verses of scripture here just to show you why I'm supposed to be narrow minded. Matthew chapter 7, the greatest verse on the thing of being narrow minded. Matthew chapter 7, verse 13 and 14. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow, there's that word, is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. I found the way that leads to life. I had a very bad life in the past, a very unhealthy, very toxic life, one of organized religion and a lot of ridiculous, stupid things that I was doing that were, that were hurting me. I've gotten out of that. I'm now on the narrow way. I do what the minority of people do. I try to live as like the ancient people did that were far more intelligent than modern man, you see. I don't look at the ancient people of the past, the Vikings and the Nordics and the and, you know, the ancient people, what be they from Britannia or, you know, Germania or whatever else, I don't look at them and say, oh, they were so primitive and so dumb. No, I look at them and say, actually, they were a lot more intelligent than people of today. Far more intelligent. You go back into the 1800s, read books from back then, which is, I love to do. Uh, they were very intelligent back then. So you say, well, there aren't many people that think that way. That's correct. That's why I'm narrow-minded and I have joy in being narrow-minded. Right? Uh, the vast majority of people have cell phones out there. I don't. The vast majority of people are driving vehicles that they don't own. They're leasing brand new vehicles and when the vehicle gets a few miles on it, they have to lease and get another one you know, the next year or something. I think that's crazy. I drive old vehicles. I like old things. You say you're narrow-minded. Yes, I am. You understand my point there? John chapter 14. John chapter 14, verses 6 through 7. 
Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. There's only one way to heaven according to Jesus Christ. And I've taken that way. Verse 7, If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also, and from henceforth ye know him, and have seen him. You can study my teachings on the Godhead doctrine, which is word for word from the pages of Scripture. The Bible, King James Bible says Godhead. Okay, it's a doctrine in the Scriptures. The teaching there is that Jesus Christ is God, holy, completely God. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. The three different names for the three different parts of the one body of God. Body, soul, and spirit. Jesus is the body, the Father is the soul, the Holy Ghost is the spirit. It's just that simple. Okay? But Jesus says, he doesn't say, hey, you know what? I really don't want to judge other people. You can be what you want and whatever else. Um, there are other ways to heaven, okay? There's other ways to be happy. And what I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the, unto the Father but by me. And if you want to come to the Father there, Jew out there, you love God the Father, do you, but you hate Jesus, then you don't understand the situation. Jesus is the Father. They're the same being. Now, he's separate in terms of body and soul. Jesus is the body, and God the Father is the soul. There's separation there, okay? That's true. But they're not two different gods. There's not two different persons there. Please get that figured out. Acts chapter 4 <clears throat> Acts chapter 4, verse 10 through 13. Peter, here the Apostle Peter speaking. Be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. Pretty narrow, isn't it? That's what Jesus Christ taught. <clears throat> now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, their narrow-minded nature, in other words, and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled, and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. Oh, you're one of those Jesus people, those Christians or whatever else. Oh, you're so narrow-minded. You're unlearned. You're, un you're ignorant. I wouldn't be so closed-minded to think that I've arrived at truth. What a way to live. I, the, the only thing that I know is that I know nothing. Really? That must be a very... Uh, you know, horrible way to live life. A lot of agony in your life. You don't have any favorites. You don't have anything figured out. I mean, what do you do? Show up at some other business on Monday morning and say, I don't know if this is really my job or perhaps I, I worked at the clothing factory last week, but maybe I work here now or something. <laughs> I, I would hope that you have some things figured out in life. You know, that you could narrow things down a little bit more, you know. Oh, but no, I have to be broad-minded. I have to be open-minded. This woman is my wife that I've been married to for 12 years, but now I think I'm going to go get another woman and try being married to her for a while. Well, is something wrong with your first marriage? No, not really, but I have to be open-minded. You know, so I need to try multiple marriages and because the land on any one, you know, marriage is the perfect marriage for me, well, that would make me narrow-minded. And You see what I'm saying? So when somebody calls you narrow-minded and they perceive that you're unlearned and ignorant and they take knowledge that you've been with Jesus because the religion of Christianity says there's only one way, Jesus Christ. Oh, and there's only one book, the King James Version in English. And whatever your language translation is in your foreign language that lines up with the received text and with the translation of the King James Bible. In your language. There's only one way. And you say, well, I, I can't agree with that. I just, uh, I find that very offensive. Well, then go and believe whatever you want. Um, be a very open-minded, you know, as they say. Um, for me, I'm going to take great joy in the fact that I'm narrow-minded. Um, people can call me whatever they want, in other words. And you perceive that I'm un un unlearned and ignorant and whatever else I hear with it. Jesus guy, whatever. Yeah, okay, I'm lining up with the scriptures. 
So uh, just got to thinking about that with all this politically correct stuff and, oh, you're just so terrible if you don't see things through the eyes of other people. Um, you know, I just want to say a few things here. Uh, I'm not okay with a lot of this wicked stuff out there. Um, oh, I have to address certain people now as, you know, the, by the pronouns that they decide on. No, I'm going to use the Bible language, okay? I'm not going to say, you know, human beings. Human beings is not in the King James Bible. I'm going to say man or mankind, all right? Um, so watch out for that stuff. So uh, that is going to be it. And um, see in upcoming studies, please be narrow-minded. There's great joy in it.